Did medieval nuns really lead lives of piety and prayer? Or were they secret participants in forbidden pleasures and scandalous affairs? Unveil the shocking truth in our journey through history. Chapter 1. Scandals in Great Britain. Imagine a quiet, serene abbey nestled in the heart of medieval Great Britain. Littlemore Abbey, as it was known, wasn't exactly what it seemed. You see, beneath its pious façade lurked a dark secret. Back in the 12th century, this place was supposed to be all about devout prayers and peaceful contemplation. But as the years went by, something changed. It transformed from a sanctuary of holiness into a hotbed of debauchery. The hospitality here was nothing short of questionable. Visitors were treated to more than just spiritual guidance. They were treated to a scandalous show of orgies, theft and other vices. You name it, it probably happened at little more. Abbas Catherine Wells ruled this chaotic realm with an iron fist. Her reign was marked by sadistic behaviour that pushed the boundaries of morality, even for those tumultuous times. The scandal finally reached a tipping point when Bishop William Atwater had had enough. He decided to intervene, and the consequences were severe. Littlemore Abbey was forced to close its doors, ending an era of sin and turmoil. This is just the beginning of our journey into the forbidden pleasures of medieval nuns. Chapter 2. Honourable Nuns of Italy Explore the lives of nuns in Italy during medieval times, and trust me, it's nothing like what you'd expect. You see, when we think of nuns, we often picture them in their modest habits, dedicated to prayer and serving the church. Well, think again. Italian nunneries had a reputation that was quite different from their counterparts in Great Britain. They were known as clandestine brothels. Yes, you read that right, brothels. So, what was going on behind those convent walls? It turns out that Italian nuns were a bit of a mystery. They wore distinctive attire that set them apart from other nuns, and this attire seemed to attract a lot of attention. You can imagine how this might blur the lines between religious devotion and, well, more worldly desires. Venice, in particular, was famous for its alluring nuns. They were like a magnet for curious onlookers. People couldn't help but be drawn to these nuns and their intriguing way of life. It's like they had a secret that everyone wanted to uncover. Now, let's be clear, not all Italian nuns were engaged in scandalous activities. Many of them were genuinely devoted to their religious duties. But the reputation of Italian nunneries as hotbeds of vice persisted. Chapter 3. Spanish Delights First off, these convents had names that didn't quite sound like typical religious places. Nope, they were named after the services they provided. Spanish nuns had a reputation for being, well, different. They didn't stick to the traditional rules like their counterparts in other countries. Instead, they had their own way of doing things. And by things, I mean enjoying life a bit more openly. These Spanish nuns didn't shy away from the spotlight. They were known for being, let's say, quite expressive. They'd sing and dance, and their convents were like mini carnivals. Imagine a religious celebration with lively music, colourful costumes and delicious food. You'd almost forget you were in a convent. Now, the Spanish nuns weren't necessarily breaking all the rules. They still prayed and did their religious duties, but they knew how to balance it with some fun. Their convents were like oases of joy in the midst of the strict religious world. But of course, as with anything unconventional, it raised some eyebrows. The church authorities, not being fans of this joyful approach to religion, decided it was time to intervene. They couldn't let this merriment continue unchecked. One notable case was St. Leonard's Monastery. This place had a reputation for its unique brand of spirituality. It was like a religious spa, where the nuns provided services that weren't exactly what you'd expect in a holy place. The church finally decided that enough was enough. They stepped in and shut down St. Leonard's Monastery. The era of Spanish convents being these free-spirited, joyous places started to fade away. Chapter 4. Attempts to bring order in Germany. So, picture this. Medieval Germany, where nuns were causing quite a ruckus. The authorities had had enough of their shenanigans. 
You see, some German monasteries had turned into hotspots for debauchery, and it was time to bring some order to the chaos. One place that had gone off the deep end was the Nardenzell Abbey. The nuns there were probably having way too much fun for their own good. That's when Duke Julius of Brunswick stepped in. He decided he wasn't going to let this go on any longer. Duke Julius, with all his fancy titles and authority, showed up and laid down the law. He said, enough is enough. Preventive measures were put in place, and they started inspecting German monasteries more closely. You can just imagine the nuns squirming under that scrutiny. But here's the kicker. At Street Eberhard's monastery, they took things to a whole new level. They turned it into what they called a brothel for the nobility. Yep, you heard that right. Nobles were having their way there. So Germany wasn't messing around when it came to reigning in the nuns' wild behaviour. They went from party central to a strict inspection zone real quick. Chapter 5. French Traditions. Now, let's talk about the French nuns, known for their rather light-hearted nature. You might think that nuns are all about prayer and devotion, but in France, things took a slightly different turn. Imagine this. French nunneries, where you'd expect solemnity, were often filled with laughter and merriment. The French church tried hard to put a lid on the promiscuous celebrations, but it was like trying to tame a wild party animal. One particularly eyebrow-raising group of nuns was known as the gnomes. These ladies didn't hold back during festivities. It's almost as if they had a secret code, thou shalt party hearty. The church's attempts to keep things in check were about as effective as a sieve trying to hold water. Now, you might wonder, what exactly were they getting up to? Well, that's where the juicy details come in. The gnomes, along with other nuns, engaged in all sorts of activities that would make your grandmother blush. It was like a never-ending carnival of revelry behind those convent walls. Chapter 6. Nuns and Brothels So what does Queen Joan do? She decides to put all the horrors and promiscuous maidens in a special place, a designated monastery. But here's the twist. This monastery wasn't quite what you'd expect. Instead of being a place of prayers and quiet contemplation, this monastery served as a sanctioned brothel. Yep, you heard that right, a brothel. It was like a medieval red-light district, but with nuns running the show. Now you might be wondering, how did they manage this? Well, it turns out the monastery had a boss of its own, known as the Abyss. Imagine someone keeping an eye on all the shenanigans to make sure things didn't get too out of hand, they even had regular checkups to ensure everything was running smoothly. But as we know, history has its ups and downs. And in this case, it was an epidemic that brought an end to the debauchery. It's incredible how these nuns went from holy devotion to running a medieval brothel. And it's a story you won't want to miss. Chapter 7. Like and subscribe to our Antikio. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, then you're going to love this one. Click the video on the screen right now and take a look. And as always, thanks for watching.